This is about as close as I can get. I'm a half inch from touching that bee with my mic. <laughs> All right, now for the part that I've been excited to show you guys and that many of you are waiting to see. Bumblebees play a vital role for growers worldwide, offering reliable and efficient pollination that elevates crop yields and overall quality. And bumblebees work diligently seven days a week from dusk to dawn, even in unfavorable weather conditions and protected environments. So what exactly is pollination? It's the transfer of pollen from the anthers of the flower to the stigma of the flower. If the pollen is transferred from anther to stigma on the same flower, it's called self-pollination. And vegetables such as tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant can all be self-pollinated. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower on the same plant or on another plant. And many flowers require insects such as bumblebees or flies to transfer the pollen. So why are bumblebees such good pollinators? Well, first of all, they visit a high number of flowers per minute and transfer more pollen to the stigma than other pollinators, such as honeybees. Bumblebees are active from early morning till late at night and also at relatively low temperatures or during even cloudy and windy conditions. Bumblebees are more effective in protected environments such as greenhouses, high tunnels, or netted orchards compared to honeybees. And another benefit of bumblebees is that they are not aggressive and they're very easy to use. So some of you may be wondering, what is the big difference between bumblebees and honeybees? Aren't there plenty of honeybees out there doing all the pollinating for us? Let me explain. Bumblebees are much more active at low temperatures, while honeybees become more active at higher temperatures. Bumblebees are even active on cloudy and foggy and rainy days. Bumblebees work earlier in the morning and later into the evening hours. Bumblebees pollinate flowers through a method called buzz pollination. This will allow a bumblebee to pollinate a flower in a single visit. A honeybee typically needs to visit a flower between seven and 10 times before it's fully pollinated. Now, since bumblebees lack the sophisticated communication system of honeybees, they are far less likely to leave your crop for more attractive flowers. Bumblebees are much more efficient pollinators than honeybees. They mainly forage for pollen rather than nectar and transfer more pollen to the pistils with each visit. And finally, bumblebees are safer for you and your employees as they are much less aggressive than honeybees. So these NATO pole colonies are available worldwide through Copper Biological. They have distribution in Turkey, Slovakia, Mexico, and all over the US. All right, so I've taken my mic off, I've turned it up, and I'm gonna walk around and try to find a bee actively pollinating and see if we can hear that buzzing sound through the mic. I apologize for the poor focusing of the camera. I'm just using a GoPro currently and it doesn't really have a feature to zoom in and focus really close up on something like this, but hopefully we can at least capture some of the sound. So he's biting the flower. This is about as close as I can get. I'm a half inch from touching that bee with my mic. I mean, I think it's so cool how they're just biting away at the anther part of the flower, transferring the pollen to the stigma. So you can see how docile these bees are. I mean, I am getting right up on them, almost touching them with the mic. And I'm probably six or 10 inches away from the camera. I would get closer if I had a good camera that could focus in. But uh, yeah, it's amazing that they don't ever get aggressive. Very non-aggressive and easy to work with. So on this set of tomato blossoms right here, you can see a perfect example of an unpollinated flower versus a pollinated one by the bees. So the one on the right, I'm guessing just opened yesterday and the bees were not in here yesterday. They were in another greenhouse. And this one here, you can see all the bite marks 
And I'm guessing they landed on this blossom numerous times because of how it's starting to turn a little bit brown. We don't want it to be over pollinated or they can actually damage it. Now, because the bees do have that uh, sugar water bag below them and they're bringing in pollen, nectar, creating just a little bit of honey for themselves, that's a lot of sweet things that ants and other insects would love to get into and they often have. So one way that I prevent that from happening is the way I place my bees in the greenhouse. I set them on top of a concrete block inside of a container filled with water. So it creates like a little moat and this prevents insects from crawling up into the box. One hive is easily capable of keeping 1,000 plants in this greenhouse perfectly pollinated, saving me time and labor and manpower to manually pollinate them. Now, even though tomatoes are self-pollinating, when they're inside a greenhouse in a closed up environment such as this, there's not a natural cross breeze moving through here to pollinate them properly. Out in the open field or in your garden, they have wind and they have other natural pollinating insects and other bees. So in order for us to get good pollination in a greenhouse, if we didn't bring in the bees, our only other option is to roll up the sides and let the wind blow through and pollinate them or to use a leaf blower. Some people walk up and down the rows with a leaf blower or to hand pollinate them with a vibrating tool. You can touch each flower with a vibrating tool and the pollen will come out and they will pollinate. And just like the other greenhouse to help protect them from ants and other insects crawling up inside here to get their sugar water bag that's in the bottom, I have a concrete block inside of container holding some water to create like a moat. So right here on the front of the box is the, the entrance and the exit. So if I need to get all the bees to come back to the box, like if I needed to spray something or move the hive for any reason, I can put it on the bee home position right here. Now they can't get out, they can only come in. And it takes about an hour and a half to get most of the bees to return back to the hive. Now when I've done this in the past, it seems like there's always a few that get left behind. I don't know if they're extra hard workers or what, or they're staying out longer than an hour and a half. But when that has happened, because these bees are so expensive, I come and try to capture them with a, like a jug with a lid on top, and then I'll take them back and put them back in the hive. I don't want to just release the bees into the greenhouse after I've moved this because they, orient, they are orientated where, to where this hive is. When they've come out in the morning, you know, they know how to get back to the hive. And if I would move this to another greenhouse without them in the hive, they would probably not be able to find their way back. All right, now for the part that I've been excited to show you guys and that many of you are waiting to see, we're gonna open up the lid and take this hive apart and I'm gonna show you what it looks like inside. Now, this might not be the best time of the day to do this because they are actively out pollinating. I would guess there's probably, oh, here's one that just went back inside. Did you see him crawling in there? I'll try to capture another one coming back to the hive and maybe one coming out. I'm not too worried about being right here because of how non-aggressive these bees are. So I'm gonna close the door, open the lid and take the inside out and try to show you what it looks like. Hopefully there's not too many bees that are trying to return back to the box while I'm doing this because they'll probably start swarming me. Let's give it a shot. All right, closing the door, we're gonna set the beehive on the ground. Can you hear them in there? So a couple days ago, they were over pollinating some of my smaller greenhouses. So I closed up the door to keep the bees in the hive and fed them some supplemental pollen just so they didn't go hungry. All right, let's take out this hive and have a look. I see a random bee down there that escaped and somehow got under the hive. We'll try to save him. These are expensive bees. I joke around with my employees that these bees are worth about a dollar a piece. With shipping, it was $290 for this box of bees. So if there's 290 bees in there, that's a dollar a bee. They're probably worth $1.50 a bee. All right, so I took out this little cover. Here is the sugar water bag. 
underneath that they are sucking the like this little nectar bag i don't know what it is exactly but they can that goes up inside this hive and they can uh, suck that sweet goodness out of that bag there so this is the hive man i got bees swarming me now this is what it looks like inside and they're all inside they're swarming around listen they're a little angry <laughs> So after the bees have been out and about pollinating for some time, they return to the hive, offload the pollen that's all stuck to their hairy legs, and then they're right back to work. So I've had several comments in the past about whether or not these bees produce honey. They don't produce any kind of honey that we can collect. However, they do produce a little bit to feed their new young brood of worker bees. I often get the question, how long does a box of bumblebees last? I'm not going to go into all the science behind it or the life cycle of the bumblebee, but they only live for one year. Obviously, the queen can live for two because she has to uh, overwinter and start a new colony of bees. So I only get about eight weeks out of these hives and they start to die off. So if you want to keep bees in your greenhouse pollinating through the entire growing season, it's recommended to put a new hive in about every six to eight weeks. I don't need to do that because once we get into April, May, and June here in Ohio, we will have our sides rolled up on our greenhouse and we'll get plenty of cross breeze in here to do the pollination for us. Now, because tomatoes are self-pollinating, it's not an absolute must to have bumblebees in your greenhouse to pollinate them for you. You can do it manually with a vibrating tool or you can walk up and down your rows with a leaf blower. However, that takes time and energy and man hours. And when we're busy out on the farm doing other things in the fields, Pollinating every greenhouse tomato in every greenhouse sometimes takes a backseat to other things happening on the farm. And having bumblebees in a greenhouse to do that work for us saves us a lot of time. Alrighty folks, there you have it. That's how we pollinate our greenhouse tomatoes using bumblebees on our Ohio farm. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content and I'll see you all again next time down on the farm.